Hello, friends and family, and welcome to our boring meditation stuff for Saturday, October 24th. I promised yesterday that I would talk a little bit about hallucination. Um, I watched a TED Talk recently by a Professor uh, Anil Seth, um, and it was actually sent to me by a friend who had read a paper uh, under um, Anil at some point. And the TED Talk, uh, I'll link to it at the end of this video actually, is um, it, it basically uh, makes a point of explaining this idea um, that our conscious reality, the reality that we experience, is uh, digested reality. So this, I was mentioning this yesterday, that we don't get a raw data stream from our sensory input. We can't really make sense of that. And so we make educated guesses based on our past experience and we sort of use our conditioned mind to make sense of the world around us. Uh, the light hitting our eyes, the sound waves hitting our ears, um, every other component of sensory input. And Anil Seth's talk addresses this idea of interoception. So the sensory input from within the body and what is that doing? <laughs> um, and he actually, he makes... Um, sort of a hypothesis, I would say. I don't think that it's necessarily proven by anything that he says. Um, but he hypothesizes that our internal input, as it were, to our experience is more important than our sensory experience. What's happening outside? We always give it this kind of 100% importance unless we're really sick or you know injured internally um, we don't think about what's going on inside our body very much but the outside world seems to be the cause for whatever is going on inside of us our minds and i actually agree with his hypothesis um, though not through experimentation or the white papers he's written but <laughs> Um, through Vipassana. So Vipassana goes through this process. It says, okay, everything outside, all these sense doors, five external sense doors, um, you're going to shut them down, actually, close yourself off to the external sensory world, and you're just going to work on interoception, um, proprioception, nociception, all of these other sorts of internal senses. Proprioception being, I know where <laughs> my body is in space, right? Um, nociception being pain. Um, uh, well, okay, nociception is kind of like broadly understood to be pain, but that's only because we tend to think about the internal sensory input from the body when it's painful. That's kind of where it starts. Like, oh, I have a cramp. Oh, okay, now I'm thinking about my stomach, but I wasn't thinking about my stomach all week otherwise. Um, but nociception also gives you all sorts of other sensory input from inside the body. Um, so yeah, subtler senses, I'm feeling hungry, oh well, I feel a little queasy, um, I just had a winding car ride down a mountain, winding switchback roads, my stomach feels upset inside, um, that's giving me a headache, I mean, all of these things are sort of pain sounding. Um, and most of the interoception, the nociception that we have, um, tends to be kind of associated with pain, even pleasant things, right? So my go-to example is always like when you were 11 or 12 years old and you had your first crush and, oh, you really like this person, this girl, this boy, and you see them and you get this feeling inside your stomach. You get these butterflies inside your stomach. And you don't really know what that means. Um, it just makes you feel sick. And it's almost like 
the kind of sick where you want to vomit. It's quite a strong feeling when you're just a, a kid and you're not understanding the early stages of puberty. Perhaps it's happening before your first real conversation about puberty with an adult who can tell you that this thing is going to happen to you. Um, and that's not exactly pain. It may even be associated with pleasantness on some level, this feeling inside um, your stomach. But that's another go-to example. Um, and that's a helpful example because it kind of captures this relationship that the external world has with the internal world. They're feeding on one another. And so if I feel bad inside, I am very likely going to perceive the outside world as being bad. Oh, no, the outside world is dark. People are evil. Bad things are happening. And if I feel good inside, I can... When I say good inside, I don't, I don't mean this in any abstract way. I literally mean, oh, okay, not... I don't feel like I'm going to barf. I feel nice <laughs> internally, physically. Um, and those nice sensations are often too subtle for us to actually feel, at least consciously. So standing around, um, we, may, we may have some familiarity with them. So uh, a loved one we haven't seen in a long time. We see them, we get to hold them. We may have all sorts of sensation within the body. If we're paying attention, we might be aware that it feels very nice. Um, and this is the discovery process of Vipassana meditation is simply going from the easiest of the five external senses, the skin. So the body skin is constantly giving me some signals from the outside world. It happens to cover the whole body, how convenient. And so I can just sort of walk around it as a starting point to say, well, okay, at least I can cover the surface of the body. And then you can start working your way inside and seeing what's going on inside this sort of discovery process. What sensations are there? And as with Anapana, <laughs> can I feel them? How continuously can I pay attention to what's happening within the body? And can I remain equanimous with that? So some itching emerges while you're practicing Anapana. Do you scratch it? Do you hate it? <laughs> Do you wish it would go away? Or can you just watch it and see it change as the itching kind of changes into heat, dissolves, maybe it goes away, it comes back, and then finally it goes away seemingly for good. Um, and then some other sensation emerges in that space where you're watching the breath. Vipassana, same thing, starting with the surface of the body and working your way in. Um, and what we find inside is the raw data stream, oddly enough. This sort of raw data stream that we had access to when we were a baby, where it's just like, I'm just seeing colors and they don't mean anything. You start out that way. So, uh, and maybe we will also finish that way, <laughs> unless we take our meditation very seriously. But you get access to this sort of raw data stream of information and you can say, oh, okay, yeah, this is what the sensory input feels like and in particular when we shut off all the external sensory input we still have all sorts of sensory input coming from our mind our brain our thoughts the physical makeup of the body um, we're digesting some food or maybe we're hungry or maybe we're thirsty or maybe we're sleepy um, something's going on in here all the time and you can get in there and feel it and regardless of how mundane those things are you can start to see them, understand them, observe them, try to be objective about it. And with objectivity, you get closer and closer and closer to the center. And the center just being where you can see all of it all at once. Um, I don't know anything about that, so I won't tell you about it. <laughs> um, but that is the aim of Vipassana meditation, and that is the point of anapana meditation is to give you this sharp needle with which you can sort of penetrate your own body and see what's going on inside. 
and through that we get a sort of doorway into the world of uh, interoception, nociception, proprioception. Um, you still know where your body is even if you're just sitting cross-legged in the dark. <laughs> um, and we can start to see how those sensory inputs are actually affecting us constantly, continuously, as long as we're alive. Um, and in that way, um, Anil's hallucination that the world outside is a constant hallucin hallucination where we're constructing it. We're building this hallucination in real time as we live. Um, that we can start to tease apart that hallucination. We can actually start to see the realities which comprise it. Um, and we can see them and we can understand them. Um, they're not mystical, they're not mysterious. Uh, they are just not something that is familiar to our conscious awareness. So uh, that's one video on how uh, as you watch this, you're hallucinating right now. <laughs> or consciously hallucinating, soberly hallucinating. Um, and I'll maybe continue with this theme tomorrow a little bit. Um, in the meantime, I hope that you're all taking good care of yourselves and taking good care of everyone around you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye.